Yes. Oh my gosh. We're live, guys. I am always excited, as always. We're talking to Lauren today. She's now 22 weeks. I can't believe that. I can't, I can't believe it either. <laughs> 22 weeks already. So how are things going? What happened at the last doctor's appointment? Fill us in, and I'm glad we didn't talk before because I've literally just been waiting to hear everything. <laughs> what, well, what, first, um, I have to say, we, we didn't plan this color coordination, but I'm, I'm liking it a lot. Me too. <laughs> I need to, to rock the lipstick next time. <laughs> oh, it is. It is. The, uh, stays on all day. It's the 24 hour one. I put it on once around 8 a.m. and I'll stay like this till 9 p.m. till I go to bed. Wow, that's miraculous. Yeah. <laughs> and I it when the twins were little because I would like kiss them and I always felt like I would just feel better if I had a little bit more color in my face because they're winter babies, right? So Lauren and I were just talking how this time of year I feel like we need a little bit more blush. Uh, I'm not a big makeup wearer, but I feel like if I have lipstick and mascara on, I'm set. Like I just feel better. And so I discovered this lipstick 16 years ago and I've wow. been wearing it every day since I <laughs> love it to death. So, all right. Yes, we'll rock the lipstick. <laughs> we'll, we'll do that. But what's been what's been going on? What when was your last doctor's visit? How are you growing? Give us all the medical end of things. So doctor's visit was actually I had the anatomy scan on Friday. So big happenings. Um and everything looks good. We have two healthy baby girls. Oh my god. Isn't the anatomy scan interesting because they measure everything, their femur, their spine, the distance of their knee to their toes. It's such a long, exciting scan. Was there anything that you witnessed that you didn't know you would be able to see? Um, I mean, all the, all the minute details, like seeing, seeing the individual bones and like we got a couple pictures of, of their feet, um, which, which are just adorable with their little toes. Um, yeah, I just, I, I, my mind was kind of blown at you know, how the ultrasound tech could zero in on all the different parts and angles from, for both babies. Um, she'd say, okay, now we're going to look like we're looking down at the spine and, and somehow she would just magically immediately yeah. go to where she needed to go. So, so yeah, it's, it, the technology is, is pretty remarkable. You know, talking to my mom before they even really had ultrasounds available and, and now that they can you know see your 3d baby and it, like the skeleton it's it, yeah kind of freaky actually but but pretty amazing it, it it's so great um sometimes people see things that they get alarmed about and then you realize oh that's normal like is that supposed to look like that like why do their fingers look like that it's <laughs> fascinating that you could get a glimpse in utero of what's going on and there's even like higher level things where they could go in with the scope it's like absolutely technology is is amazing so everything's looking good our two girlies are growing how mm -hmm. are, are they on par are they growing you know 50 percentile like did they give you kind of an estimate to make sure that everything was on track so everything looks good. Um, they're they're like in the twenty sixth percentile, which um, it, apparently they don't have a separate twin scale. It's all just all right. the babies everywhere um, at this stage. Um, so for for twins being in that percentile is is perfectly normal and healthy. So yeah, we're we're feeling feeling good. It's always nice to get a little peace of mind. Um, doesn't appease all the worrying, but definitely helps yes oh i just realized my music is still playing alexa off <laughs> if i uh, totally forgot every day we have like a theme music we am um, by myself i don't know why i said we i'm so used to being with other people so today <laughs> i was uh listening to the weekend still from last night's super bowl so did the girlies watch the super bowl did they hear it were you cheering how did they they feel about that um so i i'm a football fan um but i i can't just really sit and just watch for like four hours. Um, I have to be doing something else. I'm definitely a multitasker and that has amped up over the last few months. 
So I, ha I had it up on my phone app while I was like, you know, putting in a grocery order and doing dishes. So they were accompanying me through all of those activities. It's good preparation for being a twin parent to have to do 87,000 things at the same time. Now, with the things that you have to do, what did you, did you get anything checked off your list this week as far as the things you need to do before they get here? We actually got car seats. Aww. And yeah, starting to put together the the baby registry. We have bassinets now to tide them over for the first little bit. And yeah, starting to acquire lots of things. Yeah, it's getting real. Are is your family gonna throw you a, a shower or are you doing a virtual stuff or you're just gonna skip it and then figure out a first birthday situation? My mom's gonna throw a virtual baby shower, which I'm very grateful for. Very good. Very good. Yeah, especially so I, I have, this, what's that? This week I just put up, I made, sometimes I get into weird little moods. I love playing games personally. And I remember that for my shower, my mom and my sister created all these baby shower games. So we actually put up, um, I created all these twin themed games for virtual baby showers. That's on oh. Apple right now. I'll send you, we'll send you a link. So yeah, I'm going to write that for you. Yeah, you're gonna love it. It's just fun things that everybody could print out at home and then you could color code them and stuff like that. Oh, it's I had so much fun putting them together. I can't even that tell great. Like, do, do these celebrities have twins, true or false? That I guess. love it. Yeah. Well, thank, thanks for doing that legwork. My my mom will appreciate that. <laughs> yes. Because there wasn't anything like it. All the twin shower stuff that I found online was just twice of singletons. That wasn't like real twins. Boring. So yeah, I made that. I made that for us. Any anything to bring us a little bit more joy in our showers is fun. Okay, cool. So you're doing a virtual baby shower. Love it so much. So you did register or you're in the process of registering? In the process. Doing all of the the research and you know, I've got my list of things that we we want and kind of figuring out, you know, where to get various items and how much of things to get. So yeah, putting together the the, the list with the places and yeah, all, all of that. It's Kuga. What are you, are you registering on Amazon, baby list, ba bye bye baby, where's your big registry gonna be held? I, I made a registry on pretty much every place <laughs> and some of them send you freebies, which um, is, is pretty nifty. So I wanna make sure to take advantage of that. Um, and I have not yet populated the registry. So if someone were to search me, they would just find like six blank registries at the moment. What are the big items that you're most concerned about buying? Um, I haven't, I think the, the, the big ones were the car seats. Um, so got, got those already. The, Chico had a sale. Um, so jumped on that. Um, strollers. When I get a snap and go, um, and then a, a double stroller. So those those are probably the the big big ticket items so far. We have have a crib, um, although we'll we'll need a second one okay. at some point. So all right, and your mattresses. You have mattresses too, or you have to get mattresses. Uh, we have one mattress, yeah, for for the, the crib. All right, so you're halfway there. Yeah. <laughs> Ish. Yeah. Did you think about having a theme for the nursery or is your theme going to be utility? We're taking whatever we can get. Definitely utility. <laughs> I got gotten some, uh, some stuff from friends and friends of friends that hadn't even been used before. So we're just kind of, yeah, kind of a grab bag. N neither of us feel very strongly about a particular theme. So we're just kind of running with what we have. Yeah. It's, it's, I think, not saying that we don't have themes, but I feel like themes are a very singleton thing because you have more room to apply the theme. We always have that extra crib, which always takes up way too much space, but it's, it's just cute. So yeah, utility, I feel is a lot of twin parents theme. That is the, that is the things will mismatched kind of whatever. But yeah, if this is the time to, to really start doing your homework on these things. Now, when you register for your virtual shower, are you able, this is something I actually I have no idea about. Could you say, don't send me these things till this date or does it just come to you when it comes to you? That's a good question. I have not gotten that far into the process yet. I don't know. I'm like, huh, is everything gonna arrive at once and then you have everything <laughs> on your doorstep? 
Well, that's really, really great. Now, when you're looking at your strollers, are you are you actually doing most of this homework yourself or are you guys doing it as a team? We're dividing and conquering. Um, as, as far as the stuff, that's kind of been me so far. Um, he's looking into pediatricians and kind of doing some stuff on that end. We're both tackling the insurance piece. So yeah, take, taking different, different chunks of the, all of the many to do's. Uh, but the, now, the, the year has been me so far. Have you figured out the like the breast pump stuff when it comes to your insurance? Like as far as all that goes, do you know what you're eligible for through your health insurance company? Yes. Yeah, I actually um, have a pretty good deal through the VA. Um, they they don't have in house maternity care at the VA hospitals because they still have not quite acknowledged that there's lots of female veterans of childbearing age who <laughs> take care at the VA, but they basically outsource. So they have almost kind of their own insurance network um, and a, a pretty good, good deal. Um, so they're sending me a whole breast pump good. package um, and a bunch of other swag. <laughs> um, Do you have trust is your insurance TRICARE with the military? No, so I'm, I'm not eligible for, for TRICARE um, since I'm not active or, or reserves, um, but I, I get you know my, my veteran care through the VA. Okay. And they, they have their own system for pregnant women. We so found out that, that with that. any healthcare, I think it's a, a bit of a like research yeah. process to figure out, you know, what I'm eligible for and who provides it. And, and yeah, I, I'm, grateful that I was able to connect with the people to give me all the information I need. But yeah, lots of, uh, lots of research involved in being pregnant and Wait, there, so there's a lot of information out there, but you have to you think that it. it's so simple that they would just be like, here's a link, your insurance company, you know, United healthcare slash pregnancy, try care slash, you know, dot com slash pregnancy. It's so needle in a haystack and you have to keep digging. And so many, it's one of the, the biggest pet peeves that I have with the United States in general is that there is no uniform place for people to go to find out exactly what they have access to. Because like we just found out this week, that's why I asked about TRICARE, is that TRICARE covers the most amount for any breast pump in our country. So like wow. some, some insurance companies will only cover up to $60 for a breast pump and some, and so TRICARE gives you kind of almost sky's the limit situation when it comes to breast pumps. And it's so varied, it's it's crazy. And you know that when they give you the breast pump, you could also ask for the accessories, right? Because there's something called flanges that are kind of um, based upon the size of your nipples, the, the little cup that needs to be used with your breast pump, but you could get breast pads, you could get breast milk bags. Like it's not just a pump, but people only know about the pump, but you guys, most people don't realize you could get all of those accessories covered by your insurance. So you have to find out how to go about getting that. Do you have to order them on Amazon and then ask you know, for a reimbursement? So every company is so, so different, but it's great that like you guys already called and, and are kind of figuring that out because if you're already like people are paying for things that they don't need to pay for and you could use that money for diapers or you know takeout whatever it is that you want to use it for but many people do not realize that their health insurance companies cover so much so i'm glad that you guys um got on that that's really 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 important now when it came fine to pick a pedi time to uh, pick a pediatrician how are you guys deciding that are you going by location by expertise what are you looking for when you're picking your pediatrician Convenience is going to be very important. Um, we want someone we don't have to go real far for, um, but definitely reputation. Want someone we feel comfortable with. So we're going to do some interviewing. Um, and my, my husband works in healthcare. So he's kind of in that network and, and is asking around, getting some referrals. Um, so yeah, we're just at the beginning of that process, but hopefully he, uh, he gets on it and then we can start talking to folks and, and narrowing down our list. Yeah. Well, when you're interviewing pediatricians, some things that you should look out for is if you have, because he's in healthcare and he'll know this, but it's not as obvious to everybody else. If you have a favorite hospital, make sure that they have rights to be in that hospital. Because sometimes people will pick a pediatrician based on location, but their hospital is three hours away. And, you know, there's a million things that could happen. 
So you want to make sure that you can kind of keep everything under the same roof when possible. But Lauren, I'll tell you, one of the, the biggest mistakes that new parents make, brand new parents, is they have their pediatrician come to the hospital when the babies are born, especially if they're in the NICU. I will tell you, and you could definitely, you know, speak to Big Daddy-O about this, but I would use the staff pediatricians and the staff neonatologists because you'll see them more. You know, your pediatrician, if they, not saying that they're not going to do anything that special, honestly. The staff, the, the staff people are going to be absolutely fantastic because they also work with these nurses on an everyday basis. So the communication will be better. And usually uh, if you have an outside pediatrician come in, they'll come either before business hours or after business hours. And if they come before business hours, it could be 5 a.m., 6 a.m. that they're coming to see the babies, which means you may not see them. But if you use the staff people, you'll definitely see them because that's where they work. So, you know, for like, you don't have, a lot of people are like, oh my God, I have to pick my pediatrician because I need to know before I get born, you know, they're born. Not necessarily true. Unfortunately, this is one of those things that I learned the hard way because I delivered early. I really didn't have a pediatrician picked because I'm a fool and it was something that I didn't pick out. And when I was there, I literally felt pressure that I had to pick somebody. So I picked a rando by the uptown at the hospital. And I'm like, hey, do you want to be my pediatrician? I would have never, ever gone to this person because it's so far from where our uh, apartment is. And then I was in the NICU and the nurse that I made friends with the nurses, because that's my superpower is making friends. And she's like, why are you having, like, why did you pick this pediatrician? I was like, I don't know. They told me that I had to have a pediatrician. And they're like, no, you could literally just say you want the staff. And so from that day on, it changed my entire hospital experience because I was able to ask a question, get an answer right there. And it was Dr. Holtzman was his name and Dr. Green. And they were full-time people that were on staff at the hospital. And it was really, really great to have that, especially if you're going to have any NICU time because a neonatologist's ears and eyes are very different than a pediatrician's eyes and ears. Well, they're both kind of trained in the same thing it's not as specific. And so one of the things they see most is that a pediatrician will hear a heart murmur, but a neonatologist knows that that's one of the last things to develop on a premature infant. So it's not necessarily a murmur. It's just something, it's just a different gush, gush of, of when their heart, little heart beats. So it's good to just keep that in your mind that pick your pediatrician, not based on solely on the hospital, but based on your location. But you do, like if you have a children's hospital that's by you, clearly you want somebody that's affiliated with that children's hospital. And another thing that your big daddy -o could ask about is, um, is it electronic? Like do they have all electronic records at this pediatrician? Um, when they see twins, do they have one visit for both babies or do they require you to have two so that each baby really could get that attention necessary like they would in a typical pediatrician, um, you know, experience. Julie, Julie's on with us right now. I know that she's on the back end. I believe that we have uh, a handout for the class that's questions to ask your pediatrician. Julie, if you could just throw up a link in there so everybody could see, but we did this homework for you guys because we realized that so many people weren't asking the right questions at pediatric appointments. They were like, do you see twins? What are your office hours? What's your expectation? There's so much more meat that you got to get into when picking your pediatrician. Even like, um, what's your parenting style? You know, what's your breastfeeding expectations? What's your delivery, you know, um, well, that's your OB, your delivery expectations. But some pediatricians are like, formula's fine and there's nothing to worry about, right? But if you're like, I want to exclusively breastfeed, do you, does this pediatric office have an in-house lactation counselor that I could see on the side? So there's a lot of little things that you could think about that once again, going back to that insurance, you could get all these services that are rightfully yours if you ask the right questions. And that is my Ted talk on pediatrics. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for doing that research for us. Yeah. So, so many things that I just hadn't even thought about. Lots of lots of questions to ask everybody. <laughs> Unfortunate. That is, I feel like, why we exist. And really, we I always say, like, why are we creating, why are we reinventing the wheel? 
every time somebody has twins. Like there's been generations of people who have interviewed pediatricians. Why should you not benefit from all the mistakes that previous families have made? And that's what that's what we do here at Twin University is try to make it easier so that you have more time to watch Bridgerton or whatever the hell. Did you watch that yet? I did not love I it. Did. Yeah, did I, I totally it? did. Yeah. <laughs> I, eh, I don't I think that I had very different expectations of what it was gonna be. And I was a little disappointed. I know I'm the last one. Don't don't go <laughs> I think I went in with low expectations. I was like, this will just be a delightful romp, something to just zone out to in the evening. And then it had more substance than I was expecting. So I enjoyed well, it. Well, I think that it's going to be a series and they're going to focus on each one of the kids. Did you hear that? Uh, I, haven't, yeah, I haven't followed up on what's happening next. Hmm. Just move on to my next show. <laughs> that? Yes, we got, I gotta, I got, I'm in the mood for a new show. So if anybody has any ideas throw them out there. I did start Ozark, I'm very into it, I have to say, but I'm a late. I've got some really good things. <laughs> I just started um, Firefly, Firefly Lane on Netflix. Um, okay. The season just came out um, by a local author here in the Seattle area. So um, some some good Seattle skyline shots. Um, oh, beautiful. But yeah, it's got, you know, good like female friendships and, and family dynamics and you know, some good, some good drama. This is it. You're going to always remember these shows too, like whatever you really watch during your pregnancy, because you're going to have interrupted TV time for a few years. And I clearly remember like towards the la latter end of my pregnancy, I had to go on kind of modified bed rest. And so I was, I feel like I was forced to watch TV against my will. And I ended up watching um, Angel. That was like... Oh. The so that was what I watched. It was really good. It's something I don't think I would have ever picked to watch. But now whenever I think, whenever I see that show, like whether it's in reruns or someplace, I always think of like laying on the couch, like laying on top of my husband and just being like, what day is it? How many more days? <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. The things that you're going to remember during your pregnancy. Now, speaking of that, have you been keeping like a journal during your pregnancy? Not super consistently. I'll jot down little notes like felt the babies move today. You know, are they sending Morse code to each other? And just like weird little things I'm thinking of. <laughs> that's, that's, that's where my brain goes. It's like, what's going on in there? <laughs> are they sending Morse code to each other? This is what I want. I, I, you know, I'll get like a twitch on one side and a twitch on the other. I'm like, yeah, I think they're, I think they're communicating somehow. <laughs> Isn't that fascinating? It's true. It's, it's for, you, for those of you that are watching right now, I'd love to know if you guys think that your babies were Morse coding as well. I think that's <laughs> the military person in you too that you immediately go to the to the Morse code. I think that's that's true. <laughs> They're SOSing to each other. Ah. So with this week too, so you got your pediatrician um kind of covered. You're getting your registry together. You've called your insurance company. You're really on the ball. No, I'm trying to be. I feel like I'm, I'm, I've got a to-do list a mile long and I'm maybe like, you know, seven feet into it, but <laughs> okay. chip, chipping away at it. You got time. Now, what are the big to-do items that you have coming up besides finishing your registry? Um, the, the insurance, we don't have totally sorted out. So we, we've done some like preliminary research on that, but yeah, definitely want to get that squared away. Pediatrician. Um, getting the nursery put together. Uh, we right now have like a stash of stuff in the garage that will eventually go in the nursery. Maybe it'll fit. Maybe we'll have to shuffle it around to different rooms, um, get some stuff that is currently, you know, in what is, what will be the nursery, but is right now like the, the puzzle room slash guest room slash stuff we haven't unpacked and packed since moving into our house last year room. So I got, got a lot of, moving of things to do yeah. and, and do you have anything to do in there like any big things at all that you have to do or is it pretty much just emptying it out just something now we're not gonna paint or anything um this this bathroom retiling project that my husband has embarked on is our, our big oh home upgrade before the babies arrive how's that going um right now we have no walls in the shower okay. <laughs> No walls at all. It's just the studs 
or is it just that the kind of fancy bathroom sheetrock? Um, no sheetrock even. That oh. that all came down to. Um, okay. Yeah, and we got tested for asbestos, which was a fun process. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's. He, he's on track. He's got, you know, everything he needs and he's been watching YouTube videos and feels relatively confident. So. <laughs> we've, we've got a couple of months wiggle room. So. Do you have the number of a contractor, God forbid? Do you like, you know, who you would call <laughs> we have Google. So. <laughs> That's it. Like an Angie's list or home or whatever that that uh, app is. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a lot to not have walls, but it's going to be great when it's done. And it's going to be exciting. And it's yes. going to be. And we do have other bathrooms. So it's not like our, our main bathroom we're using for everything. I wouldn't, I would not have uh, been so agreeable in that oh And then when you're getting your, your home together, you know that you have to get other areas of the house. Like you, you'll need a, um, a shelf in the kitchen cabinet for like baby bottles. So just think about now, like when you're putting on your list, like those are easy things to tackle. So just say, okay, well, what will I need where? Where am I gonna store, you know, the baby shampoo? Where am I gonna store the bottles? Where are we gonna store the diapers? Where are we gonna store extra whatever? So just do a little space planning in your head from the couch as you watch Firefly Lane. Just kind of, you know, say, all right, here's what we're gonna do in this room. So this room, we need to do A, B, and C, and D. And then this room, A, B, and C, and D. And it may be less to bite off if you put it into smaller increments instead of just saying, clear out the garage. Like that <laughs> nice a lot, you know? So yeah, there's gonna be, Coral said, a little diaper caddies everywhere, which is true. If you have a big home, you definitely wanna have multiple diaper stations. So, you know, if you get like a, a box of fresh fruit, after the babies are born, that can be used as a diaper caddy. If you see a sale at Home Goods, that it's a clearance for a basket that, you know, is miscolored or something, that could be a diaper caddy. Anything pretty much could be a diaper caddy. Well, you're really on the ball, girl. I'm very excited for you. I think this is this is really good. But in general, how do you feel? Like you had your anatomy scan, you're getting your stuff done, but how do you feel? Like, do you feel any different for your 22nd week? I do actually. I, I I think I've gone through a, a belly growth spurt in the last couple of weeks. I kind of feel like I've been I'm being inflated from the inside. Um, if for a while I was like, man, when am I going to start looking pregnant? And then like, bam, it happened. So um, I look I look and feel pregnant now. Uh, like even just rolling over in bed um, becomes a whole process, and like my shirt gets all twisted and. And I make these like weird uh, kind of noises. So my poor husband probably isn't sleeping very well either. And I, I keep reminding myself, you still have four months left to grow more, which is kind of terrifying. Um, it's a slow, you'll yeah. get used to it. It's not yeah. like you'll wake up tomorrow when I've gained 40 pounds. So like, it, <laughs> that's the blessing of it. It's, it's slow and steady. Yeah. But in general, I'm feeling good. I, I, I'm dealing with some insomnia. Um, which I've had kind of off and on throughout my life anyway, but um, I, yeah, it seems to have been amplified of late and I'll, I'll wake up at like four or five o'clock in the morning and you know, my brain is just like reeling and um, yeah. So that's, that's been, been hard. And then not being able to just grab my extra cup of coffee in the morning is, is oh, yeah. challenging. This is water for the record. Like really, I'm not drinking coffee <laughs> on here it's just water don't get it oh, I, I wouldn't judge you i would live vicariously through you <laughs> i've had enough today um what are you doing about insomnia what are what are your kind of solutions to fixing that or are you just like that's the time i'm waking up now it's 4 a.m yeah i haven't really figured out a, a magic bullet for that one um i have occasionally been taking melatonin to try to help um get me to sleep and stay asleep for as long as possible. Um, I really should just, my, so my husband actually works in sleep medicine. So he knows all about sleep hygiene and, you know, what, what you should be doing in, in different situations. Um, and I really should just be getting up when I am lying there getting frustrated with myself for not still being asleep. Um, it, that just kind of feeds itself and doesn't help anything. Um, so I should be getting up at 4.30 in the morning and 
and then hopefully be more tired the next day. But I just don't want to get out of bed at 4 30. Especially it's nippy at this time of year. It's not really, it's not the most conducive for bouncing out of bed. Even the daylight isn't with us yet. What does your husband say about that? Like, what are his, like, I love that you have that in your house. I mean, honestly, I'd be taking advantage of that. But is he, is he getting up with you? Is he like, what is, how is he adapting to your new sleep schedule? But I, I try not to disturb him as much as possible. Um, and, and he's not a great sleeper either. So we're both like in our little bubbles trying to, you know, get as much sleep as we can and not wake each other up. Um, and then we commiserate about it during the day. <laughs> but we've, we've tried to get into more of a like sleep hygiene, you know, give ourselves time to wind down, yeah. read our, our twin books in the evening and just relax and, you know, no screens after 930 kind of thing. Um, and neither of us are super great about it. So it's, it's a work in progress. It's tough, man. It's tough. It is really, really tough. Now, have Coral just said one of our, our viewers right now, I don't know if you could see the comments too on the side, but have you thought about, you know, instituting any type of like little meditation or a mantra or something to try to clear your mind? Because that's the problem is not that your body doesn't want to sleep. It's that once your mind wakes up and starts running through the list of the stuff in the garage and the no tile in the bathroom, you start going down that rabbit hole have you looked into any apps or or anything about meditation or relaxation techniques? Uh, yeah, so the, the two of us actually have done some, like as we're going to bed, meditations and, and do find those helpful. Um, I have not tried that yet at, at oh dark 30 when I wake up. Um, yeah, I, I, I keep just like resisting, like I don't want to grab my phone because I don't want to wake myself up more. And yeah. so, yeah, I, I need to. You just got to learn you gotta, you gotta learn some techniques that will help you. One of, I'm going to give you three right now that will help you tomorrow. The first thing that you could do is make the alphabet with your feet and then concentrate on the A, B, C, D, E and just do it slowly and make them like do the A, like in conjunction A be and so sometimes focusing on that and the muscle movement will make you a little bit more fatigued and able to sleep again but you actually got to finish it the other one is you could start at your feet and and you know strengthen the muscles tighten the muscles in your feet tighten the muscles in your calf tighten the muscles in your knee in your thigh and work all the way up your body the other thing is just repeating uh, the word is mantra i think mantra is just like a it's a very like I know that's the real word, but it doesn't have to be a mantra. Like I actually taught my kids how to meditate and all we say is mango. So you just keep saying the word mango in your head. And I remember when I first started that with them and it was on the recommendation of, I think my son's occupational therapist. So my son wasn't sleeping really well. And she's like, you know, try this with him. And I was like, okay. So literally it's just mango. You just keep saying the word mango. And then eventually you don't realize that you stop saying the word mango. And the minute that your mind goes away from mango, and by the way, it could be literally any word, Lauren, it doesn't have to be mango. But as soon as it goes away from mango, you just bring it back in. And it's worth a try because it's nothing you have to pick up your phone for. It's nothing that will disturb him next to you in bed. It's nothing that's going to cause you to toss and turn. You don't have to get up for it. But at any of those three, the alphabet, the alphabet is such a good one. It's my fave. That's the that's my personal go to is my feet alphabet. I also do that when I'm flying for circulation. It's really good just to to move your feet around. But the alphabet one tries to work. That's good for just. I have to think about the alphabet. I can't think about anything but the alphabet. It's not really. I think the alphabet. So it's it's tough and it's honestly. I got to tell you, it's going to get tougher. Yeah. <laughs> if you could figure out now what might work for you or maybe a series of four and you rotate them it's just gonna get a little bit creepier as your pregnancy progresses and it really is mother nature saying hey listen you're gonna be getting up at 4 30 anyway to change some diapers and feed some babies so you might as well just start now that's really unfortunately what's happening yeah that's what i've been saying i'm just practicing for when the babies are here but i would rather <laughs> 
be yeah. building up my my sleep in advance of that. I want you to build up your sleep. You're gonna you'll you'll need it, but you'll need it more for healing than for exhaustion. You know, sleeping is a time where I'm I'm, I'm a little bit of a computer nerd. Do you remember? I don't know if you've ever done this, but there used to be something called defragging your hard drive. And yes. so you, so what, so for those of you who are Mac people, Mac people don't know about this, but back in the day, 700 years ago, you know, you would have all these things on your hard drive and then you would do this thing called defragging and it would take everything and, and put it in sequential order and organize it nicely for you. When you sleep, as the partner of a sleep expert, you know this, but a lot of people don't realize that sleep is when your brain reorganizes kind of the thoughts of the day and you heal from any traumas that you might have had. There's a lot of important things that happen when you sleep and that is why it's a literal form of torture, right? Sleep de deprivation is a literal form of torture because if your brain doesn't ever get to relax, we're in some deep doo-doo. So yeah, you gotta you gotta get your sleep, and if you could figure out the strategies that work best for you now, hopefully when the kids are five months old and you're having trouble sleeping, you could pull all the tricks out of your grab bag and use them again. That's it. But now now it's gonna get fun. I'm telling you, this is when all the fun starts. I cannot wait to talk to you next because there's gonna be so many different changes that start to occur in the next few weeks. It's all good stuff. You're going to grow differently. You're going to have muscles that are going to start to stretch. Your sleep pattern really may change. Your eating pattern may change. You'll start nesting soon. Like this, this is a fun portion of your pregnancy. So really enjoy it as much as you can. Are you taking your belly pictures? I hope. Yes. Okay, good. Please, please do. And yeah, any anything that's keeping you up at night, that's actually something I could help with and not the bathroom. Although I totally could. <laughs> I can't do plumbing, but I could I could definitely do tiling. I'm good with the grout. I'm good with that. Although I don't wipe it off the tiles enough and then I have now grout on my tiles. I didn't know that it was gonna stay forever. So I've learned. I've learned from my past lessons. But anything that I could help you with, that's something that you've been struggling with this week. Um no, I I mean I, I will say I've I've been <laughs> utilizing all the like lists and reviews on Twiniversity and that's that's really helpful just just to have someone else like we said earlier to have done the research you know for me um I I always prefer to just you know plagiarize other people's work as opposed to yeah. doing it all myself but like you said like, no point in reinventing the wheel so um mm -hmm. I appreciate having access to the internet and just all the amazing resources out there um it's just a matter of sorting through them and, and doing it in a, an incremental way so I don't get totally overwhelmed by the sheer volumes of information. Do you have a copy of the, it's, I don't know if we can see it, there it is. Do you have a copy, sorry, by the way, I totally should have moved the boob. I got a new boob for breastfeeding. <laughs> I apologize. But do you have a copy of that, that version of, of my book? Um, so I believe I have one coming. Um, okay, good, as long as it's on the, the way. Class registration. Okay, good. Yay. Okay. Yes. All right. I'm very excited. All right. I will see you soon. And you know that if you need anything from me that you could just reach out to me that I'm always here for you guys. And by the way, that goes for you viewers too. If there's anything that we could help you with, just email us at community at twiniversity.com and we'll be more than happy to help in any way that we possibly can. I was telling that on Mondays, we always have our Twiniversity meetings. And last night I got a text message of somebody who was peeing and they thought that it was too dark. So that was in my text message was the color of her pee. And then I was like, yes, you need to drink more water. It's literally, you you don't even understand. So never hesitate to reach out, whether it's that your, your, your pee is too dark or whatever, I am always here to help you. Oh, I'm so excited for you and I'm so happy that you're growing. Thank you and thanks everyone in the comments for the, the recommendations and got some other um, meditative and mantra type recommendations there so thank you for sharing yeah if all the sleep tips you can't have enough you got to keep trying until you find something that works it is not you know this works for me this works for you sometimes i have to rotate five things and so do my kids but just having just knowing what's going to help you sleep it's going to be great great for you yeah. all right guys. so lauren thank you again for playing with us <laughs> my pleasure and I'll okay. see you next time with matching outfits and matching lipstick. I can't wait. This one <laughs> is, I think, 093. 
So yes, if you need it. Oh no, 035. I just read what that one. That's this color. <laughs> You can't beat that. Well, guys, until next time, if you need anything from us, like I said, community at twiniversity.com, or you could send us a direct message on any social platform. We're literally just at Twiniversity. And until next time, guys, we'll see you later, alligators.